Good evening, everyone. So Keffels, a trans streamer, has finally reached success regarding their recent campaign to convince a CDN, Cloudfare, to drop Kiwi Farms as a client. As I am writing this script, their URL redirects to a message stating that accessing Kiwi Farms through their services has been blocked. In addition, the company that provides Kiwi Farms with its CAPTCHAs has also revoked its services. Kiwi Farms then switched over to a Russian-based CDN, DDoS Guard, which later dropped them less than 24 hours later. They tried again with a Chinese CDN, and same story. It's actually quite interesting because the user base of Kiwi Farms is primarily QAnon obsessed, oh, America first, Patriots number one, but then they'll happily use services from other countries when the United States eventually decides that they're too crazy to support. Every time a CDN drops Kiwi Farms, the original URL is stuck on an error page. The oh-so-catchy KiwiFarms.net is stuck on a Cloudfare error page, the not-as-convenient KiwiFarms.ru directs to a DDoS guide error page, and so on, and they'll continue to play hopscotch until they're eventually eradicated from the surface web, relegated to the dark web a la HN and the Daily Stormer, where that is likely going to be their final resting place. A largely inaccessible page, desperately clinging to life in the way a goldfish out of water would, obstreperously flopping around with no hope of even vaguely veering toward a trajectory of success, or even so much as a pathetic limbo to exist in for other criminals to use their services on, until they give up on the site because the site is incapable of even maintaining its current user base in the state that it has. Kiwi Farms is getting killed slowly but surely. As of right now, all it is is really just a telegram group chat that requires Gestapo-style verification to enter. It has been reduced to a simply unsustainable form and it is 100,000% justified. Make no mistake, this website has toxicity embedded within the fiber of its being. It originally began as a website to stalk and document Chris Chan, but then eventually expanded to all lol cows. The entire goal of this website from day one was to dox and harass individuals. If you can believe it, the website consistently engages in racist, sexist, homophobic, transphobic, etc. language, becoming a safe haven for white supremacists, not Nazis, pedophiles, and basically every other thoroughly disgusting demographic to communicate and convene on. The website publicized and promoted the manifesto of the New Zealand Christchurch shooter, and have even been implicated in the suicides of three people. Julie Terryberry in 2018, Chloe Segal in 2018, and Nier in 2021. And this was the outright goal of the website, to drive these people to commit suicide. They mass report posts made by these people to lock and restrict their social media accounts in an attempt to prevent them from being able to reach out to other people for help. But who is Keffels? Keffels is a very politically loquacious streamer who often promotes radical ideologies such as trans people are human and, get this, racists are bad. She's done extreme things such as funding thousands of dollars to trans charities and helping facilitate people that would like medication because they are trans and they can't afford it or they don't have insurance. They facilitate that process. So yeah, this is a pretty despicable individual we have on our hands here. She typically frames these opinions in an extremely divisive, no-holds-barred method. She basically says things like they fucking are, without any sort of boldlerizing or language or consideration of the feelings of her opponents. In response to Keffel's sort of disrespect of transphobes, homophobes, and racists, Kiwi Farms started up a campaign to dox and harass Keffels. They claim that she is a failed fart porn voice actress. Don't worry, I will be saying the words failed fart porn voice actress many times in this video. That she is a child predator, that she had a group chat in which she groomed minors, etc. Long story short, all of those claims are incontrovertibly false or grossly exaggerated. So let's just go in order. Failed fart porn voice actress. She failed to break into that thriving market, I'm afraid. Right off the top of the bat here, I'm just gonna get fucking real. Even if this is true, which I've seen conflicting information on whether or not it is, how the fuck can you even care about something like this? It's such an alien concept to me that anybody actually gives a shit about this at all. It has absolutely no influence or effect on you. Who fucking cares what she did to earn a paycheck, if she even did it? She tried to make money making porn? 
Oh, wow, that's really embarrassing. Next, you'll tell me that she sacrificed all sense of hireability to platform racist Nazis and pedophiles on a website to the point of buckling all financial security and well-being. That'd be really embarrassing. Next thing's next, the group chat Catboy Ranch was a Discord server Keffels was a moderator of, which required photo ID to enter any of the over-18 channels. There's a mega thread of proof compiled by Kiwi Farms itself, and it's all easily debunkable within five seconds of scrutiny. Their primary example of Keffels grooming someone involves an individual named Maya, who Keffels interacted with when she was 16 years old. One of the examples of grooming is in which Maya is asking for help on her GoFundMe, so Keffels responds with a drawing of her character to bump the post to get it more attention. This is not grooming. This is not sexually suggestive. This is such bad faith projection. Keffels has not exchanged nudes or lewds with minors. Keffels has not engaged sexually with minors. Keffels has not had sex with minors. And none of the screenshots in the Discord in the thread include Keffels at all in the screenshot, or include Keffels talking to any minor. Which leads me to believe that these aren't even screenshots from Keffels server at all. There's no evidence to prove that, oh, we have a screenshot of this person in this server. See, there's their name there, because it's easy to prove if someone is in a Discord server or not. Well, you didn't. You cropped them, so we don't know what Discord server, or even if they're even a real person. And because you didn't include Keffels in any of the screenshots, it's really difficult to believe. Like, yeah, I'm sure you care so much about this potential grooming victim, that's why you continuously misgender them and send donations with hateful comments to their GoFundMe campaign. Someone even tried to bribe Maya to accuse Keffels of grooming her. I can send you $100 if that helps. Fuck off. And once again, let's just get fucking real. To be very frank with you, do you honestly expect me to take Kiwi Farms seriously as a source? After all the times Kiwi Farms has falsely accused people of being pedophiles, this is the time that they're correct? With the most paper-thin, bad-faith arguments that I've ever seen? Okay, look guys, I know we accused the mysterious Mr. Enter of being a pedophile, like, yeah, I guess he's not, but this time we're we're sure, we're really sure. You're the boy that cried groomer if there ever fucking was one. Furthermore, there's another claim that Keffels would buy collars for the users in the Catboy Ranch server, and that these were minors that these collars were bought for. Now, the one and only example I could find was a collar that one user bought for themselves. Keffels did not buy this collar, this was of the user's own volition. And yeah, they had it engraved with the Catboy Ranch server thing. It's a little weird, but honestly, who the fuck cares? By the way, you know how old this user is? God damn it, Keffels, would you stop grooming this 30-year-old miners? Shame on you. It's just a lie to say that Keffels bought this collar for several users and that these users were children. Like, it is so easily, provably false. Next, hormones made in some Brazilian guy's bathtub. Do you even hear yourself? Now they're referring to the DIY HRT directory document created by Chloe, which the majority of the document only pertains to legally obtaining HRT to begin with. But regardless, this document isn't written for children. It is written for people that want HRT medication that can't access it, which includes adults that don't have it covered by their insurance, adults that don't have health insurance, adults that still live with their parents and their parents don't accept who they are. It is so ridiculous, presumptuous, and it, again, it is just in such bad faith to say that this document was written for children. The document is not written for kids. It is not written to groom kids. Now, there is parts of the document that do talk about synthesizing your own HRT medication, but frankly, the methods of both obtaining the resources and actually successfully yielding HRT medication is so complex and convoluted that if a minor actually managed to pull it off, then I would say that they're intelligent enough to make informed decisions about what they can do with their own body. Like, who the fuck would it even hurt? Now, while we're on the subject, Chloe and Keffels have both been involved in facilitating the ability for minors to get hormone replacement therapy. Now, when I say minors, I'm talking 16 and 17 year olds, not like nine year olds or something like that. But of course, they need to get the most inflammatory response they can, so they'll call them children instead of 17 year olds. Now, Kiwi Farms frames this as grooming, so once again, I feel the need to remind people what the definition of grooming is. Grooming is when a child predator intends to molest a child by befriending them and manipulating them to yield a sexual relationship. 
Now, facilitating a minor's access to medical treatment and diagnosis is not grooming. Now, I am not going to pretend that I am very well read on if minors should or should not have access to HRT medication because I'm not a health professional. I can't really make informed decisions on that. But what I do know is that on average, trans minors that get HRT medication are a lot less likely to fall victim to suicide, which is something that Kiwi Farms has always actively promoted. But I'm sure that's a coincidence, right? And I also am aware that medical professionals state that children should have access to hormone replacement therapy if they are diagnosed with gender dysphoria. And I don't know better than a health professional, so I'm inclined to agree with that. I don't know how much of a permanent impact hormones have on minors or if they're reversible, but for the sake of argument, let's just assume that hormone replacement therapy is a permanent process for everyone. Now regret, very simply, is a risk that every single trans person takes when they decide to transition. These risks are understood going in, and the overwhelming majority of people that decide to transition, and the overwhelming majority of people that decide to transition, including minors, don't detransition. The amount of mental anguish is astronomically larger if minors aren't allowed to get on hormones compared to those that do. Frankly, if we look at the numbers, it's just purely more ethical to allow minors to be prescribed hormone blockers or HRT medication. Now, once again, I am really not very well informed on this, but from what I understand, statistics state that kids that are trans are a lot more likely to kill themselves if they don't get treatment for it. Another criticism directed towards Keffels was her being celebratory of a Twitch streamer named Destiny being banned from Twitch. Now, don't worry, I will be coming back to that, but it's important to understand that these are all the primary accusations that were hurled toward Keffels before Keffels decided to call Kiwi Farms out. Eventually, Keffels responded to and outwardly mocked Kiwi Farms for the horrific behavior that they participate in, and I simply do not disagree with her response at all. But of course, having their ego challenged, Kiwi Farms had to respond the only way they could. Someone from Kiwi Farms posted Keffel's address onto the website, which someone later used to impersonate Keffel's by emailing every city councilman in her city stating that she killed her mother and that she intended to go down to City Hall and kill every cisgender person she saw. Now when I describe that, it sounds so palpably fraudulent and just screams that this email is intended to specifically generate a large police response to make it a lot more likely that this person will end up murdered by the police. And as you can probably guess, they sick the dogs on Keffels, who was woken up in her home with a gun pointed at her face, courtesy of the London Police Service. Now, once Keffels was released from police custody, she released a video claiming that despite her mom being alive and well, and not finding an illegal firearm in her place, she was still being considered a suspect of a crime. She had all of her electronics seized by the police, which she and her fiancé needed for their jobs and for her fiancé's degree. She was also not able to reobtain the property until five days later, under much public pressure and criticism. After this unacceptable behavior from the London Police Service, she launched the GoFundMe page with an original goal of 20,000 Canadian dollars to file a lawsuit against the London Police Service for their incompetence, abuse, and blatant credulousness. In response to this, Destiny gave his reaction on stream, which I will play in full now. Uh, if you want, like, an official statement, if you, people, like, um, yeah, it's shitty that Keffels got swatted, like, nobody should get swatted, that obviously sucks, um, but I have no sympathy for her. She, like, aggressively pokes and prods and fights with, like, the most aggressive communities on the internet, like, I don't, I don't, I don't know, and, like, obviously she treats me as less than human, so I don't have any sympathy for her, I don't care. but I mean, it sucks, obviously, no one should get swatted. Treats me less than human. Now, why on earth would that be, Destiny? Now, I apologize if the non-linear timeline of this video is a little difficult to keep up with, but this is the last time I'm gonna be cutting back and forth. In March of 2022, Destiny was outwardly critical of Leah Thompson, a trans woman streamer, for being allowed to play in women's sports. To boil the argument down for brevity's sake, he argued that since Leah Thompson was born a man, she had a biological edge to her competition. Now, never mind the fact that women's sports have a maximum limit of testosterone, there was even a couple cis women that were kicked out for having too high of a natural testosterone level. Despite what Destiny seems to believe, a biological man can't just put a bow on and waltz right into competition. The prospect of someone even doing that is so incredibly ridiculous. 
Yeah, you can become an Olympic swimmer so long as you permanently change your entire identity. I'm sure there's thousands of people that would do that. That's why it happens so often. Now, in response to Destiny's outrageous claims, Keffel's combed Destiny's entire backlog of things he said on Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, etc. in an effort to find ban-worthy things. And then she would then publicize these things to bring more attention to them. One of the things that Keffel shared for everyone to see was Destiny's very mature response to someone committing the crime of disagreeing with him over whether or not ignoring a safe word is rape. For the record, his stance is that ignoring a safe word isn't always rape. Ignoring a safe word and not stopping when someone asks is ignoring consent and is rape. Go fuck yourself. Kill yourself, you fucking cunt. I hope you get raped with a fucking shovel until you bleed out your fucking vag and die holy. A couple of things. Yes, this comment was made over six years ago. I can acknowledge that. It is in fact likely that this comment does not necessarily represent what Destiny believes today. I can acknowledge this. Now, in response to this, Keffels called Destiny a rapist. Now, I'm gonna be getting into very dangerous territory on how I state this, so please just bear with me on this, and please, I hope that my words are not understood the wrong way. This is a pure assumption, first and foremost. But I don't think Destiny has ever violated someone's safe word. I don't have any inclination to believe that. I do think that violating someone's safe word is rape, but I don't think that believing it isn't rape doesn't really make someone a rapist, if that makes any sense. The comment Destiny made is putrid, vulgar, abhorrent, but I don't think it makes him a rapist. And you can argue all you want about what he said, but unless Destiny has raped somebody, he is not a rapist. It is simply not acceptable to call him that. Now, if you, the viewer, agree with that statement, then you should have absolutely no problem with what I'm gonna say next. It is unacceptable for Destiny to say that Keffels is a rapist. Destiny said that Keffels is a rapist because Keffels does not always disclose whether or not that she is trans before hooking up with someone. He claims that it is sex under false pretenses, when it is not because the person that he, they are hooking up with is making an assumption. If it's really a big deal with the person hooking up, then they would ask beforehand. That is generally the convention. The person is on them, if they are going to assume that they are a cis person. The burden is not on the trans person. It is so difficult to believe that Destiny even gives a shit at all and he's not just leveraging these stories because you were called out for your bad takes on trans people. Grow the fuck up already. Now, this isn't a claim that Destiny has made, but other people have also called Keffels a rapist because her fiance is autistic. <sighs> I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna let that hang there. I'd also like to point out that Destiny has done identical sorts of things to Keffels, including being celebratory of any setback Keffels suffers and sending followers to report and raid Keffels. Some of these were done first by Keffels, and some of these were done first by Destiny, but the fact is, it is not at, oh, Keffels started it, I'm just finishing it, as Destiny is so doggedly claiming. Destiny is someone that is fucking obsessed with optics. He is extremely critical of people that use neo pronouns, even outright mocking and disparaging those that use them many times on his stream. First time, I'll do a show a screenshot of things that make me comfortable to bring to the community's attention. Also, he misgendered me the whole segment. I misgendered her because they're using neo pronouns of ma mar that they invented themselves. Fuck out of here. This person is even worse. I can forgive the other girl because she, or ma. Furry, whatever the fuck she goes by. They, it, Mar goes by. And also, he criticizes them in his obsession book. But ironically, he doesn't apply that same standard of optics to himself. He's live streamed several times with a white nationalist, Nick Fuentes, and then talks about joining Nick Fuentes' live streaming site to stream on. And then he also says that Keffels is worse than a white nationalist. And then, two months before Keffels gets doxxed, he says this Why I absolutely do not give a single fuck if Keffels gets doxxed or harassed. I have no care for you as a fellow human being. Yeah, guys, he cares so much about optics. That's why he constantly does and says inflammatory things to trans people. To garner criticism like that, he blocks all trans people he can on Twitter because they offer nothing of value. Now, Destiny's latest criticism is that once the goal of the GoFundMe was met, Keffels extended the goal. However, I have absolutely no problem with that. When you make a GoFundMe and the goal is met, you're presented with two options. Canceling the fundraiser or extending the goal. 
most people, including Keffels, extended the goal. Which makes sense, why the fuck wouldn't you? If people are wanting to help, why wouldn't you accept more help? Some people call it mercenary, but honestly, after having a gun pointed at her face, she can have as much money as people are willing to give her. At the end of the day, it's not like she raised this money under false pretenses. She asked people to help her, and people volunteered monetary support. If she didn't have a GoFundMe, and instead posted like a PayPal link or something where you couldn't see how much money she made, then I sincerely doubt anyone would even care. It's just that they see the number and their brain goes, Oh, number too big! They're so- they're so fucking greedy! Shut the fuck up. After Keffels extended the goal, Destiny made several tweets about it, stating that she's greedy for increasing the fundraising goal, stating that she isn't going to file a lawsuit against the police department, and making light about the situation several times. Screenshot this tweet. Keppels is not gonna file a single lawsuit. She did file a lawsuit, by the way. Uh, not, not even that far after this tweet was made. After she uploaded her first video, she and her fiancé moved into a hotel until they could find a new place to live. She shared an update to her Discord server, saying that she was safe at a hotel. What happened next is that someone researched all the hotels in the London area, looking for a bedspread that matched the one in her photo, and then posted that hotel onto Kiwi Farm. Once again, the creator Null and his community shared it around, attempting to get Keffel swatted. Meanwhile, Destiny continued to mock her, stating that she was an idiot for sharing the image of a bedspread. Now that's an observation. I mean, hindsight really makes everyone a fucking genius. For the record, I am pretty well versed in knowing what details people look for when they are trying to dox or swat somebody, and even I probably wouldn't have realized this. It's, it's a very granular detail, and it's easy to point out that something was a mistake without knowing what made it a mistake. By the way, Destiny also once again went on to point out how much money she made on GoFundMe. Meanwhile, the London Police Service released a statement which many people, including Destiny, interpreted as bulletproof, solid, 100% infallible evidence that Keffels lied. Primarily because Destiny already stated she did with no evidence. For example, the police said that they knocked to gain entry, which I'm inclined to believe is true, but that doesn't mean that Keffels was the one that opened the door. They have a fiancé, and as Keffel said, their fiancé opened the door. She woke up, she looked down her hallway, and she saw someone with a gun pointed at her. This isn't that complicated. Now, shockingly, the police also admitted that they did dead name her several times, which obviously caused her great duress. And there was another claim in the police report that, like, oh, they looked at the body cams. London police service cops don't have body cams. So that's an outright lie by the police department. Like, do you really trust the police this strongly? They've got such a flawless reputation of accepting responsibility, don't they? It's so obviously just haters trying to find any shred of evidence that they can leverage against Keffels, no matter how boldly implausible it is. After she was doxxed for the second time, she moved to another hotel. At this hotel, Keffels' Uber Eats account was accessed by Kiwi Farms, who then used it to purchase hundreds of dollars of food to her expense to her hotel room. And from there, she expedited her move to Europe, where, until very recently, that's where she stayed. I'm not going to be sharing any more tweets Keffels made in reference to her location. I really don't want to give Keffels a hard time about this, but there's a few mistakes that she made. This isn't to give Keffels a hard time, this is for me to be educational here. From there, she expedited her move to Europe, where, until very recently, was where she was residing. So, number one. Um, announcing that you've been doxxed before you've settled into another more permanent and safe residence is sort of a verification of the information that they found. Now, I don't fault Keffels for sharing an image of her bedspread. That's a very easy mistake to make, and frankly, I wouldn't have caught it as a mistake. However, when you publicize that you have been doxxed, you've been essentially confirming that dox. Keffels should have waited until she got to her safe house in Europe before she announced this, instead of announcing that information while she was still in that location. Number two. Stating descriptors of where she would be moving to. Keffels volunteered a lot of information that could be used to coordinate where she might be residing. She stated that she is moving to Europe, which, I mean, it's alright, Europe's a pretty big continent. She then stated that she's moving into an apartment. Okay, still not horrible, but that significantly reduces the possible locations where you could be. But then she also mentioned that she's moving in with a streamer that's housed other people before. Now that's probably what did it for you, Keffels. Because that gives a very narrow margin of information for stalkers to research. All they would need to look for is trans 
find streamers from Europe and see which one has a reputation of housing other people. Then they can cross-reference their apartment with your face cam streams. Because if they find that person that you're describing, then the ability for you to keep yourself secure is minimized exponentially. Because even if you have the best security in the world, if you're living with someone else, and that person has horrible security, then all they would need to do is attack that person's security. For example, if the streamer that you were staying with had a Facebook page, then someone could easily look through their Facebook friends and find family members and stuff like that. Now they got a bunch of different Facebook pages that all are giving a little bit of information, but once they give enough information, then it's game over. All they would need to find is just some small detail and it would give them a massive hint. Uh, a street sign in a family photo, um, going to a birthday party and you see a specific sort of landmark in the background. Honestly, if you do want to keep yourself dox proof, just delete Facebook outright. Don't like privatize your wall, don't remove all your friends, just delete it. Because even if you are 100% confident that you are super secure in what you post on Facebook, odds are someone that you associate with on Facebook isn't. And your security is only as strong as its weakest link. Because these freaks will look for the smallest details and idiosyncrasies in the background to cross-reference with other shit to try and stalk you. So that all the Kiwi farmers had to do was match details like the baseboards of the house, the doorknob, etc, etc. And that's exactly what they did. They attempted to swat Keppels, but because European law enforcement only has muskets and horses to work with, they didn't blow up her entire house. But frankly, you got really lucky there, Keffels. Now, it's really easy to overlook this stuff, which is, again, why I'm trying to emphasize not to blame Keffels for this. I'm just trying to take an opportunity to teach people that there are very small details that you could accidentally give away that could give a massive clue to a stalker. I think the most disgusting part about all of this to me is that Destiny is obviously operating almost exclusively out of spite. To the point that he will desecrate other people's deaths and say that there's no evidence to support that they even happened. Yeah, here's tweets that Destiny made saying that there's no evidence that Nier is dead despite being confirmed by their employer and on various news outlets. And it's just so obvious that he would not be making these tweets trying to prove that this person is still alive if it wasn't to spite Keffels, which I think is in incredibly immoral and disrespectful. Alright, moving on. I frankly detest the idea that a lot of people like Nicholas DiOrio have been pushing, which is that Keffels has been intentionally putting herself in harm's way for money. That is a baseless conspiracy theory pushed by the same transphobes that tried to pedo jack at her. Nicholas made a flagrantly disingenuous thread, which includes out of context screenshots of Keffels tweets, and even extremely tenuous things like Keffels retweeting a tweet celebrating Nicholas seeing a violation of terms of service warning on Twitter. He refers to Keffel's GoFundMe as a get-rich-quick scheme made off the backs of dead trans people. Again, it is disgustingly disingenuous and hypocritical. He accuses Keffel's of sharing screenshots out of context when he does the same exact thing. He accuses Keffel's of deliberately interpreting and contextualizing things in the worst way possible, while he also does that in his very first tweet. He has issues with her saying that she doesn't care at all what happens to his Twitter account. Meanwhile, he's gone on record literally saying that he doesn't care at all what happens to Keffels. Not that he really needs to care about Keffels, I'm just saying that his outrage doesn't seem that sincere. Nick also claims that she's only really fighting Kiwi Farms to attack Destiny's income, which would, I guess, ironically be very indicting on Destiny's part, and that Keffels only took them on for that reason. I guess it has nothing to do with the fact that they tried to murder her. I also love that he adds this little parenthetical to say that this is all alleged, because God forbid if he doesn't give Kiwi Farms their due diligence. It is so obviously just hatred compartmentalized into a phony show of valid criticism. Disgusting. There's also been people claiming that she's a racist, like another Twitter user, Jay, did. Jay is a black person who leverages their race to indemnify themselves from launching baseless claims about people, such as stating that all Vosh fans are Nazis and capable of rehabilitation, and that they should face the wall. She then attempted to do the same thing to Keffels, such as insinuating that Keffels is comparable to a groomer, and stating that she's racist because Keffels doesn't feel like giving money to random black people that insult her if she doesn't. This is a deliberate tactic that Jay uses to manipulate other people who sincerely want Want to listen to black people and hear what they have to say to fuel a disinformation campaign. Keffels responded saying that Jay is a tumor in the community and that they should be excised and I have absolutely no problem with that statement at all because Jay is a liar and the Twitter community would honestly be better without her. 
fuck her. Now where we're at now, Nicholas DiOrio is claiming that Keffels only took the money to go on vacation and that Keffels is living her best life. Now I understand that these statements could bite me in the ass, but frankly, I am so sincerely confident that Keffels is not living their best life right now. In regards to Kiwi Farms, Keffels is completely innocent and she did not deserve any of what happened to her. I want to say that I don't have any harsh feelings to anyone that happens to support these content creators. Personally, I don't imagine myself watching people that have said such egregious things, but my criticisms lie solely within the people that I've mentioned personally. I'm going to give this situation another six month window of time for more information to come out, in which I will make a follow up video about it, to correct any information that might become outdated in this video. So hopefully I will be seeing you guys again in May not eating my words. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I really do appreciate you guys watching to the end. Please be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to get updates on new videos and to check out my other content. Thanks for stopping by. I've had to add a final footnote here because the footage that was in this video was recorded months ago and something in the video aged pretty bad. Yeah, Kiwi Farms is back. And I think my confidence in that Kiwi Farms would be forever relegated to this internet graveyard was, like, wishful thinking, partially. And also just flat out overconfidence in being, like, on top in this sort of conflict between normal people and evil people. It's nice to think that this issue that has been plaguing the internet is no longer going to affect other people. But I think what that part has taught me is that we do need to remain vigilant and not sort of let confidence get the better of us and make like such bold flying assumptions like that that could fall through easily to the point that it like compromises your own security. I don't know, I'm kind of just rambling right now. Um... But I really do appreciate you guys watching still. Um, more videos to come. More videos coming faster. So, hope to see ya.